Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Some folks need more time. Jesus was a genius in relating to people. Sometimes he would talk to large crowds and get great results. And at other times, he would resort to a smaller group in an intimate setting and he would be equally effective there. But it is the one-on-one meetings that you find him being patient, answering questions, giving some strong responses. Let us talk about Jesus and one Jewish man who had a private meeting with him. In John 3, we read about Jesus in a late evening meeting with Nicodemus. Who? Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee, a man who followed all the religious details. He was a member of the religious leadership in Jerusalem and he came to meet Jesus one night. Just two religious leaders having a man-to-man meeting. I love it. That way they would not be competing with others and there would be no interruption and they could speak openly. Nicodemus was curious about Jesus and it seems he had been hearing Jesus' teaching in the public square right there in Jerusalem. Jesus must have seen into his heart because Jesus went straight for the jugular. Jesus told him that if he wanted to enter into the kingdom of God, that he must be born again. That was a Jesus concept and it caught Nicodemus off guard. What does the phrase mean, being born again? Jesus had the time and so he gave a full explanation that to be born again, it is a spiritual experience between a person and God. And that was the only way to get into God's kingdom. The conversation got even deeper. Jesus told him that this born again issue was a decision that one makes in response to this statement. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. By this time, Jesus had his full attention. Nicodemus was paying maximum attention to everything Jesus said. He went on to tell Nicodemus about the light and darkness reality. Jesus is light and the world is darkness. The born-again experience entails the light of Jesus coming into a person's life and dispelling the darkness that represents sin. The meeting that night did not end conclusively. Nicodemus did not make a decision to be born again and a follow-up meeting was not scheduled. Do you think Jesus wasted his time? Well, On a later occasion, the religious leaders were trying to make a case that Jesus was a troublemaker and should be silenced. Our friend Nicodemus, who had had the meeting with Jesus, he stood up that day to defend Jesus by suggesting that it was not right to condemn a person without a fair hearing. He almost gave himself away. That conversation, however, did not end well either because His colleagues accused Nicodemus of behaving as if he had bought into the Jesus hype. What do you think is going on here? There are some people who choose to give their lives to Jesus on the spot because they might hear something in church or wherever and they become fully convinced that they should become a Christian right away. But there are others who have questions and they do research, and they talk to folks, and they give it a lot of thought. Either approach makes sense, except the guy who does the second thing, you don't know when you will die, so if you do it the Nicodemus way, you might run out of time before you've made your decision. Anyway, up until that second time, we never heard that Nicodemus became a Jesus follower. He seemed to be struggling with his traditional religious perspective on one hand and the Jesus radical way to come to God and become a follower of Christ on the other hand. But watch this. Those very religious leaders, the Pharisees of whom Nicodemus was a member, they conspired and had Jesus arrested and crucified because he was too much of a challenge to their practice of strict adherence to Jewish religious tradition.
versus Jesus' new gospel that someone must be born again. They could not accept that this man from Galilee is indeed the Son of God. So they had had enough of his strange teachings and his false claims, they thought, and so they had arrested him. They chose to silence Jesus once and for all on the day that they crucified him. Well, Jesus, now being dead, needed to be crucified, to be buried. And guess what? Two men went to the governor, Pilate, to ask for the body of Jesus. Are you ready for this? These two men, Joseph, a religious leader who had secretly become a disciple of Jesus, and our friend Nicodemus, yes, for Nicodemus to have come out publicly and identify with Jesus that day indicated that he had settled the issue that Jesus raised with him. Nicodemus was now born again. In fact, Nicodemus proved how devoted he was to Jesus by bringing 75 pounds of spice to embalm the body of Jesus for burial. Do you know anyone like Nicodemus? Someone who needs time to make a final decision to serve Jesus? All I would say to you is don't pressure them. Pray for them that God will give them the courage to make a final decision and get ready for the day when they share their decision with you. I promise you, you will be glad you were part of the decision-making process. More power to you, Nicodemus. You took your time, but you did the right thing and you became a follower of Jesus. However a person comes to Jesus, what matters is that they come to him before they, to they die. The truth is, some important decisions do take time.